Et bonjour mes amis, bonjour, comment ça va, monsieur, mesdames, sud de la Louisiane? There's one corner of America that doesn't sound like the rest of the country. For a note edition de la Tasse de Café, et mon partenaire Charlie Monwell, bonjour et bienvenue. Ville Platte, Louisiana lies deep in the heart of Cajun country, where the descendants of French settlers embrace the simple joys of life. We don't have a whole lot around here. People, the, the pockets aren't very deep, so we better enjoy the people. You put music out there and the Cajuns will love to dance. And uh, Cajuns enjoy hunting squirrels. Well, you felt the power then, just like me. I was like, whoa. Opening day of squirrel season, it's like the Cajun holy day. We should consider that the Cajun Passover because there's a mass exodus of people going to the woods. And then the Cajuns love to eat. Everything you get put in a sauce. I mean, you can cook turtle in a sauce, squirrel in a sauce, rabbit in a sauce. If E.T. would have came in Louisiana, he would have been in a sauce too. So same thing here. If you're inside, you got to take him down, chop him down so we don't have no problems with the trap. Though the roots of Cajun culture began in France, the love of high school football is purely American. We don't produce great football players. When you look at them physically, they're not six foot four, they're not 290 pounds, but there's a little fire in there that you just can't explain. It kind of jumps on you. In Ville Platte, no fire burns brighter than the high school rivalry between the Sacred Heart Trojans and Ville Platte Bulldogs. Two years ago, Tim Fontenot led an effort to make the yearly city championship an even bigger event. The tea cotton bowl is kind of like a slice of Americana with Cajun seasoning. We thought since we have the cotton festival, let's do the, the cotton bowl. And to keep it distinct, we call it the tea cotton bowl, which is Cajun French for petite. So tea being small, a little cotton bowl. But with only a week before the game, Hurricane Lily swept up from the Gulf of Mexico and its eye ripped through the heart of Ville Platte. It wasn't supposed to come here. It's the first hurricane in history that they know of that didn't turn right. It's a lot of destruction. It's also brought the community together. People helping each other in the streets, helping each other in the neighborhoods. And I think the game being played and still being played no matter what happened, I think that's just an indication of the spirit of the Cajun people. We're going to forge for it. We're going to make something positive happen on it, and something that was as negative as, as Hurricane Lily. While the Tea Cotton Bowl is a recent event, it draws on a fierce rivalry that stretches back decades. Football in this town has been the king of sports here. Moved on down, you know, generation through generation, and these kids have a lot of people talking about football since they've been growing up. We feel like we have something on our shoulders to keep up their tradition at our school. Nobody would tell us, like, you'll have to win or anything, but we know that they want us to win, they're pulling for us. In this game especially, a lot of the energy and the enthusiasm you get for the game comes from knowing that people have done it before you. It's like your family. It's a closeness. It's all a part of the Cajun culture. It sure would be nice when you're sitting around with your grandkids on the flip a tape on too, huh? And show that you won. Pray for us. Pray for us. There's definitely pressure, you know. We won the last two years. We definitely want to make it three years in a row. The Ville Platte Bulldogs also have a rich sports tradition and dominated the series for a number of years. Yet they had never won the T Cotton Bowl title. It's a big deal because it's Sacred Heart. They the team across the tracks and whoever wins gets bragging rights for the year. And we never got that chance, and we want to change that. All the Bulldogs fans look at it like, if you win every game, but if you lose to Sacred Heart, then uh, your season is a failure. It's just hard, you know, when you lose and stuff like that, then you got to deal with all that, then the fans. They're representing for a lot of people. They got people that actually bled and cried on that field after losses and, you know, people that take it to heart. Some people it hurts so much to where they can't attend the games. I just keep hoping these kids can get a taste of what it's like to win because we've been on the losing side for a while. These kids right here don't really have much else besides sports and school. 
They face a lot of problems, a lot of broken homes, this hurricane, economically deprived. But still they come every day. They practice, they go out there, they sweat, pray together, and we play football. And after that, nothing else matters. The evening before the game, both teams join together to share a meal. We help open the door with this game. It helps these kids to grow, to come together, and to understand that this is more than just a game. We got a lot of people that think that we're separated, whether it's by schools or by race. And here's one way that we can prove to the people outside this community that we're a bunch of guys that grew up together and we're a family. And we are going to play a football game tomorrow. Amen. Amen! On game day of the Tea Cotton Bowl, alumni from both schools gathered to weigh in on the contest. You bulldogs, you yeah. bulldogs. Well, look, we want that trophy. That's Bring right it on, bye-bye. I know y'all gonna run that ball, and I know y'all gonna pass that ball, but it's the Tea Cotton Bowl, and yeah. I'm telling you, you gotta watch those trophies. Yeah, naturally, they wanna kick each other's butt while it's going on, oh, yes. And but that's just life, you know? You got John out number two to one, but Tonight's I... Tonight's Lil' Cotton Bowl and not Lil'. So that's you much know. better. And y'all might have me outnumbered right now. But tonight, we're going to be 11 against 11. I want that trophy. I want that trophy. That's my trophy. That's my trophy. <laughs> Take a good look at the trophy, because it doesn't belong to you anymore. Last year's team is the team that earned it. Now, if you want it, you're going to have to come back and earn it. You have a chance to show what you're made of today. You have a chance to show what it means to wear the purple and white. Before kickoff, the Bulldogs began a cross-town march to the stadium at Sacred Heart. Along the way, Coach Ward Corville challenged his team, saying, don't cross these tracks unless you're a man. Y'all been hollering war all year. You wanted a war? You got one. Take a minute. Keep your mouth closed. Close your eyes. Think about what you got to do. When the game's over, I promise you, when you look back at the scoreboard, you're still going to feel proud one way or the other. You ready for this game? Shoot, Daniel, let's get out there now. Are you ready for some football? Let's get ready. Rather than dividing the town, the Tea Cotton Bowl helps to unite it. We're not playing somebody from another town, we're playing each other. Playing hard against each other, and after hugging each other and knowing, you know, they go out and they'll play and they'll see each other around town and they may go out together. And you should play harder against your friends. Just like when you're small, if you play checkers with your buddy and your buddy doesn't try, you get angry. Your friend expects the best out of you. The word compete in Greek doesn't mean to strive against, it means to strive with. So when we compete, we bring each other up, we make each other better. Row left, looks, he has time, throws into the end zone, touchdown! Despite their intense rivalry, the Trojans and Bulldogs ended the Tea Cotton Bowl in the true spirit of the game. Two teams united in one town. There are no losers here because both teams played hard and never gave up. Without each other, y'all wouldn't have played a hard game like this. We are so proud of you. Remember, you're all our kids. Y'all not losers, y'all are winners, and we thank God for y'all. 
Everybody get a hand up together, and I want everybody to say winners, because you are all winners. Get it up loud. Be proud of who you are. One, two, three, win! Hi, I'm Steve Sable of NFL Films. Football is a special game. It's played nowhere else on earth. It's a unique game, a tough and demanding one. But most of all, it's a team game. And to be successful, all members of the team must work together. A football team is really just a group of guys throwing in with each other on a dream they've had their whole lives. It's about self-respect self-sacrifice. It's about being part of something larger than yourself and feeling proud of it. And this season, all of you in this room become part of a special football tradition. The Tea Cotton Bowl. And this is a continuing story. It's a living history that's been going on for 30 years. Now you get to write the next chapter. You get to make your mark in a book that will never be erased. And this next chapter will be written, as all of those before it, in sweat and blood, with pride and commitment. And nobody can predict how this part of the story will end. But when it does end, make sure you can say to yourself, I did my best. Be proud of this tradition. It's a great tradition, and you're about to be part of it. Good luck. Every fall in Ville Platte, when the town's two high schools meet in their crosstown rivalry. But unlike some rivalries that could become hostile or heated, these two schools bring the town closer together when the Bulldogs and Trojans take the field. Ville Platte is located in the heart of Cajun country, where life's simple pleasures are celebrated daily with friends and family. A railroad runs through town and seemingly splits it in half. But each fall, when the town's two high schools meet on the football field, this quiet Louisiana settlement is never more united. The Ville Platte Bulldogs and the Sacred Heart Trojans have met on the gridiron for decades. But it was only three years ago that this game took on added significance as Dr. Tim Fontenot, a local physical therapist and football fanatic, decided to create the Tea Cotton Bowl. The Tea Cotton Bowl was developed out of love because my son was a senior and uh, we wanted to do something special for his senior year. I noticed the camaraderie between uh, Ville Platte High and Sacred Heart the prior year. You know, they beat uh, Sacred Heart 39-13. My son came back and said, Daddy, I hate to say it, but that was the funnest game of the year. And he says, boy, it would be something if the cotton festival, which we have over here, would put like cotton bowls on our jerseys and make it special. And I said, well, that costs a lot. I said, but how about a trophy? Yeah, a tea cotton bowl, a little cotton bowl. Tea in Cajun French means, is Cajun slang for petite, little, little cotton bowl. And that's what it is. It's small, it's tea, but it's, it's big to us. The night before the game, both teams gather for a group dinner and a chance to learn more about each other away from the field. Then it's game day, and everyone in town roots for their favorite team. Some even root for both teams. We love the Trojans, and we love the Bulldogs. Finally, it's time to settle things on the field. For 48 minutes, it's going to be a game. It's going to be a war. And then before the game, we're going to shake hands with them. After the game, we're going to pray with them and the kids will go about and whoever wins gets bragging rights for the year. Both teams play hard and provide the fans with plenty of excitement. Hey, all good, all good. All good. And in the end, Sacred Heart emerges victorious. But in this game, there really are no losers. As the teams gather at midfield for a final prayer and a message from their coaches, they end the post-game huddle by shouting in unison, one word that will echo in the hearts of the players for years to come. One, two, three, win! And ultimately, it's all the people in Bill Platt who treasure this great crosstown rivalry that are really the winners. The good folks in Bill Platt show us that although people may come from different backgrounds, the love of football can truly unite them.